Hi traders, this is Chris from Elite Currency with a video on why and when do Fibonacci levels work in the Forex market. Before watching this video, please be aware of the risks involved in trading Forex exchange and take a look and pause this to read the entire disclaimer or take a look at our disclaimer on the website elitecurrency.com slash risk disclaimer. All right, let's continue with our video on Fibonacci. Of course, this is part of a series, an entire series on one topic, Fibonacci. And recently we discussed Fibonacci retracement and Fibonacci targets. So the, com the beauty, of course, of combining uh, both the entries and exits is that it's just a lot easier to trade with one powerful tool and makes things a lot simpler. And simple things in Forex trading is always very useful. Now, one of the difficulties in real life trading with the Fibonacci tool is that it doesn't always work. So why and when do Fibonacci levels provide value for you as a Forex trader? Well, they're basically, in my opinion, and there could be more, but two important things out there that explain why Fibs work so well. Fibonacci levels go hand in hand with the market psychology. There are times when the market will pull back to correct an uptrend or downtrend with it before continuing. Or there are moments when traders anticipate a momentum correction for a zigzag correction. In these cases, Fibonacci retracements provide discounts for entries and also establish the targets. So it is the traders and hence market psychology that goes hand in hand with these Fibonacci levels. But there's more to it. Fibonacci is also a mathematical concept. The 61.8 ratio is called the golden fee or the golden ratio. So from that point of view, this level is extra special. And some uh, famous uh, people, Kelper, called it the one of the jewels of geometry. It's been called the divine proportion and also just the letter phi. So obviously, it is an important level uh, to, to reckon with, uh, and uh, therefore, we need to know about it. The importance of the fibs is specifically uh, valuable when there is a trend going on. In a trending mode, most Fibonacci levels will hold and provide solid entries. And here you can see an example of that on the pound dollar in uh, recent weeks. And you can see eight times in a row the Fibonacci levels working very neatly to give a bounce for further upside. Of course, that only happens when the market is trending. That is the trick kind of to keep an eye on when the tool is working. Now there are certain moments where price will not do this, uh, you know, work as well as, uh, as with the Fibonacci as here with the trend. And those of course moments are consolidations, corrections, ranges, and sideways moves. Because then the Fibonacci levels are mostly ignored, not always, but most of the time. And price is more responsive to different levels like bottoms and tops. So in, in that regard, uh, we need a trend or momentum. Momentum is just as valid. Not only a trend is important, but momentum, strong price movement in one direction, that too is also a mo moment and environment where price respects uh, the Fibonacci level. So once again, to summarize, Fibs work best in trending markets, momentum moves, and not well in ranges and you can see here an example of a range where price is just chopping to the sideways you know going nowhere no steam forward or downward and you can see uh, that the Fibonacci levels the bottoms and the tops are consistently broken as the range is more important than the Fib levels themselves of course as you can imagine defining the trend and understanding what momentum is becomes important because if we are not able to identify a range or a trend, we won't know whether to use the FIB or not. So that is an important concept, trending, reversals, range, and momentum. And we need to accurately understand and uh, be able to define those different types of environments. Now, this particular topic deserves a own series, and that's what we will do once we have Fibonacci series completed and we will dive into trends and everything else that is connected to, uh, to this. So that is an important topic too, but too large of a topic to discuss now. In general though, B 
be aware that trends are a series of tops and bottoms, and momentum is just a series of candle highs or lows. So if we take a look at an example on the chart, basically a trend here is the green line. It indicates we have higher highs and higher lows. And this is a trend channel to the upside. But the green, the lighter green arrows indicate the momentum within the trend, right? You can see candles pushing higher and higher with higher lows. And for a downtrend, those would be lower highs. So that's the difference and both are equally valid when using Fibonacci for identifying potential retracements and targets. Now, as you by now should know, there are quite a considerable number of Fibonacci levels. I personally use six retracement levels and a whole more bunch more of targets. Now, there's a major difference, of course, between taking a trade at the 23.6 Fib or the 88.6 Fib. And the difference between reward to risk could be tremendously, you know, tremendously big. So it's important to know when we can expect, Forex traders can expect, which Fibonacci retracement. If we expect a deep Fib, then of course we're better off to wait for that. Or if we expect a shallow Fib, then of course it, we're waiting for nothing. So it's important to know which Fibonacci retracement is the most likely at what point in time. So realizing that, for instance, uh, a deep pullback mostly occurs when the trend is not yet clearly established. In those cases, prices will make multiple ups and downs and severely test the bottom in the uptrend or the top in the downtrend, but without breaking those levels. Then obviously, we can have more patience and wait for a deep retracement. However, most of the time when the trend has already clearly established itself, then typically shallow pullbacks such as 23.6, the 38.2 and the 50% FIB are more typical for price environment at that time. So that is what typically happens when looking at a trend. Now, momentum is a different story. Momentum could occur at any point with or against a trend. And basically, if you're trading a correction, a bigger correction, then it could be really any FIB, but not the 23.6 most of the time. The 50 fib is quite uh, common, the 61.8 as well. If you're trading uh, basically momentum with the trend, then too, it could be any of the fibs really, um, the th but even more likely perhaps the 38.2 and the 50. Now, there is confluence when using different Fibonacci levels. Let's take a look at an example on the chart here. You can see uh, a lot of different colors. Let me explain. First of all, we see uh, the Fibonacci level on the left is corrected very deeply, all the way down to the 78.6 Fib. Here, price was not yet established in a trend, so we get a deep correction. But as you can see, as we more go to the, you know, to the right side of the chart, you can see that price is retracing uh, less deeply. It's moving up and up and up. And first it retraces to the 61.8, then to the 50, then to the 38.2 fib. Now it doesn't have to be always that accurately that it moves up one fib, it's a coincidence, but, or actually maybe they're twice, 61.8, but typically shallow fibs will occur more often as the trend uh, matures and, and pushes to higher levels until of course, perhaps a bigger retracement occurs. So that is the first thing. The second thing I wanted to tell you is look at the magenta fib, the corrective fib there, it neatly indicates a confluence between the corrective fib and the very first green fib, where the 61.8 and the minus 61.8 line up, and the 78.6 fib and the minus 1000 target line up as well. That is a confluence between a momentum uh, correction fib on the very first momentum against the trend, plus the with the trend Fibonacci retracement level. And you can use those two to understand uh, where the confluence is. So this wraps up our uh, series here, a continuation on how to use it, or actually when and, and why to use it, sorry. Next video is actually on how to use the Fibonacci, which swing highs and swing low to use, and also we'll take a look at the invalidation levels. Thank you so much and wish you good trading. Cheers.